Hello students. In the previous videos in this series, we looked at a number of index laws, but in every case the indices were positive whole numbers, or what we call natural numbers. Now it turns out that we can actually talk about indices that are other sorts of numbers, such as fractions and negative numbers. So let me give you a quick example using the calculator. So I'm just going to type in, for example, say 9 raised to the 1 half power. And let's see what the calculator tells us, tells us, tells us that that equals. So the calculator gives us an answer of 3. So it turns out that 9 to the 1 half does actually have a meaning to the calculator. What about... A, uh, a negative number. Let's try that. So I'll clear that and I'm going to try 3 raised to the negative 2 power. And it gives us that as a decimal, but if I turn that into a fraction, you might get some idea as to how, how we interpret negative powers. So the point of this is, it's possible to talk about indices that are not just natural numbers. And in the next series of videos, we're going to show you how to interpret those. Okay, let's have a look at what it means to raise something to the zero power. Now, it doesn't really make sense under the current definition to talk about a to the zero, because that's just saying I've got zero a's. And a to the 0, because a squared means I've got two a's multiplied together, but how can I have zero a's multiplied together? Okay, so what we're going to do is work on the, the, uh, the statement that, or the fact that mathematics must be consistent. So whatever meaning we apply to a to the power of 0, it has to be consistent with all of the other index laws, and it has to be consistent with all of the, all of the other mathematics that we've learned. So let's see how we can do that using this idea of consistency. So we can figure out what a to the 0 actually means. So let me drag that out of the way. So I'm going to actually interpret this two different ways. First off, using a property of numbers, a squared multiplied by 1 equals, well, anything multiplied by 1 equals itself. So 6 by 1 is 6, 12 by 1 is 12, so a squared by 1 is a squared. Now we could use an index law 1 to also simplify that. So the index law says if you multiply powers with the same base, you add indices. So a squared times a to the 0 is just a to the 2 plus 0, which is 2. Okay, now let's have a look at all of this. That's the same. That's the same. Therefore, those must be the same. If a squared times 1 gives me a squared, and if a squared times a to the 0 gives me a squared, it must be true that a to the 0 equals 1. And that's because those have to be equal if both of those statements are true. So raising any number to the 0 power, we interpret that to be 1. Now it turns out that's largely true, but there's one exception, which is what happens when we raise 0 to the 0 power. Well, Tim says 0 to any power is 0. Like, for example, 0 to the power of 3 is 0 times 0 times 0, which is 0. So he says that has to equal 0. Mel says, no, but any number to the 0 power is 1. That's what we just learned in the last on the last page. So 0 to the 0 must equal 1. So the question is, who's correct? Can they both be right? Well, they can't both be right. 0 to the 0 either has to be 0 or it has to be 1. 
Well, let's see what happens if we try to do it on the calculator. 0 raised to the 0 power. And the calculator says you can't do it. Math error. There isn't an answer. So any number raised to the 0 power equals 1, except 0 to the 0. We call that undefined. 0 to the 0 is undefined. So index law number 6. Is any number to the power of 0 equals 1, except 0 to the 0, which is undefined. And algebraically, a to the 0 equals 1, where a doesn't equal 0. And there's an example just there. So let's go ahead and apply this to a couple of questions. So anything to the 0 power is 1. So 5 to the 0 equals 1. A, B, and brackets to the 0. Well, anything, no matter how complicated, raised to the power of 0 equals 1. Let me try this one over here. 4C to the 0. Well, because this doesn't have brackets, that's like 4 times C to the 0. Now, C to the 0 is equal to 1. Again, we're assuming C doesn't equal 0. So that becomes 4 times 1, or just 4. So note the difference between those two questions just there. Here, everything is raised to the 0 power, so the answer is 1. In this question, C is raised to the 0 power, so the answer is 4 times 1 equals 4. OK, stop the video, and you do the remaining three questions, please. OK, let's see how you went. OK, here we have all of 4 times c to the 0 power, where anything to the 0 power equals 1. So that equals 1. 0 to the 0, that's the exception. As we tried it, um, tried it out on the calculator, that gave us a math error. In mathematics, we don't say math error. We say undefined. And finally, 6 times 0 to the 0. Well, if that's undefined, you can't multiply it by 6. So that is also undefined. So that's a quick introduction to an index that isn't a natural number. Okay, in the next video, we'll show you what to do if the index is a negative number.